Affinity Photo can create some really weird designs from very basic brush designs. I'm just going to use this, a round soft brush. Now, the end result, obviously, you wouldn't be able to create using a round soft brush, but it's a great source for new brushes. So let's just remove that. And I'm just going to go here to the paintbrush tool, set the size to about 55, and I'm going to go for red for this case. So I'm just going to apply it and just apply it. Nice little wave design. Now I've created obviously slightly wider than I want. I want actually a very thin design. Well, what you can do, simply just go here to the move tool and you can resize it. Also what you can do, go up here, select and selection from layer. So then you get this, because I want to fill it with something. I don't want a solid color like that. And just go here, the gradient tool and apply a gradient. Now the default one obviously is white to black, not ideal, but what you can do, you can simply go up here and make certain it's set, click there and select the swatch. Maybe go for something like that. And then when you apply the gradient tool, just apply it down like that, you've got a load of color. Now you will have a slight red around the edge, but you can remove that very quickly. Simply select and deselect and still see it, but it gives a bit of a stroke to that. Go to layer, effects, and go for 3D. And that near enough removes, I think that, uh, just set it to about there. So you've got a lovely sort of bit of depth to that brush stroke. And close. Well, now what I want to do is I want to define it as a brush. So I need to go to layer, and down here to rasterize, and deselect that. Because I want the whole thing to be part of the brush. So make certain the 3D effect is rasterized, everything's rasterized, and now go over here to the brushes and right side menu, and you can find the brush panel in the window menu. Go here and down there to new brush from selection. And you can select that. And now you've got this design. You can of course modify it in numerous ways. You can also still, if you want, just make that slightly, it's still wavy. You can go again, right side, new brush from selection and of course you can create multiple different designs simply rotate it maybe just copy it hold down the ultra option key and just duplicate that design and create maybe a slightly more complex brush a whole range of different things you can create just with a very basic design maybe apply additional brush strokes to it so let's just remove that well if you go over here now double click and you can see your design there what you can also do is you can go to general and you can change the spacing so you can push it really crunched up like that. So it really goes very narrow, as narrow as you can get, 1%. And then you can change the rotation if you want, maybe that one or that one. And now you can apply it. So press B to get the paintbrush and just apply. And you can see you've got this lovely design like that. Now I don't want to create it like that. I want to create it with sort of going up and down great way of doing that is go to dynamics and go to scatter y so scatter y and you can see straight away as you do that what happens it's a line design and of course you could use any kind of line designs obviously i created a wavy design maybe create zigzag designs maybe pulse designs you could use it with different sort of dashes or something a whole range of different possible but as long as it's like a straight line downwards so you can see that structure there now when you apply it you can see what happens. It creates this, maybe a, like a very quickly just apply over the entire layer. And you can create very rapidly a sort of a weird and wonderful threaded background, super quick. And of course, you don't have to go with that extreme. Of, yeah, you go scattering, maybe reduce it down a bit and then apply it again. You can see a different result. And maybe like that. You can also add in maybe hue and jitter. So hue jitter there. Maybe go for instead of random. Unless that's what you want. So if I apply it now, random, you can see you get a lovely design like that very quickly. But you can go for cyclic. So cyclic, set that on, and you can see then the colors change from red to green, blue, etc. And then go across, and you can see as you do that, you'll get more controlled color, which you can then modify just by going down here, click here, go for different profiles. So you might get more yellows or greens, etc., in your design if that's what you want. What you can also do is you can go here for rotation jitter. 
So rotation, you get a sort of lovely turning effect. So it applies it across the screen, more sort of random feel like that, sort of tangle of these wavy lines. But I'm not gonna go for that one. What I wanna do is also, I can click here, I can go there and I can go to cyclic, do cyclic first, and then I can modify this. So go for one of these profiles, maybe the second one. You can see you get a lovely design like that. So the, it's more controlled. So you get a sort of stops and then it goes like that and then rotates as you go across. All kinds of different line designs can be created using this approach. Well, what you can also do is, let's just remove this layer now. I'm just gonna close it. Now what you could do, you could just then just take this layer and squeeze it like that. Now, obviously <coughs> that's not gonna look right. And it's fine, but it's nothing too special. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna create it again. And this time, I'm just gonna create it very subtle. And I'm gonna reduce down this as well. Don't want it that right. Maybe just go like that. And you can see as I do it in that line, it tendency just to make it all along a line, like that. And that's what I want. Because now I've got this design here, you can resize it. You get this lovely sort of tube of sort of tangled mess of lines. Well, now let's just quickly go here to the zoom tool and you can just see this, you can see the entire design. And you can of course maybe make it slightly bigger that way. Maybe there. So you got that, got the move tool selected, press return or enter on the keyboard, and this panel will pop up. And with this, what you can do, you can go over here, scale, you can turn around and say duplicate. So horizontal, and you can see you move it. Now I'm just gonna move it about there. I think that's quite nice. So you can now see this. So there are patterns in this. Patterns are great, but patterns are repeated in both directions, horizontal and vertical. I just want this sort of vertical effect. So I'm just gonna go with this. And now the number of copies, let's just go duplicate and all the way across. And you can see you get this sort of design lovely sort of tangled, but it's repeated over and over again. And then click OK. You could also, if you want some variation, you maybe go for a bit of rotation so you can get different effects that way. But I'm just gonna keep it at zero and then click OK. And you've got that design. Well, you might not want it so uniform because it really does stand out when it's got all these tangled things. All it is lots and lots of layers. Well, you can go over here with all these layers, you can select them. Select all those layers, right click, and then group. And then you can then go here and you can then merge them visible, or just simply rasterize the entire lot. So it's all rasterized. Now what you can do, go to filters and distort and deform. Makes it actually before you do that, move tool we selected. It's probably the best one. Some of these tools will make disrupt the actual manipulation of the settings. So distort and deform. With this, then just add some pins. Now, obviously there's a lot of structure here, so I'm not gonna do it with all of them, but you can see as I do that, just add these pins very rapidly and randomly. You can add them at different positions, maybe slide all along a single line, maybe to alternate like a check, checkerboard or something. So you can see, you can create all these and I'm just gonna add a few more. And now what you can do, you can just distort it just slightly in different directions. Just very rapidly just do that, move that way. And I always like to alternate. So just alternate one direction, go that way, and then go that way. So you don't end up having, see sometimes dragging the layer a bit too far, and so on. You can see as you do it, now you don't have to add too many of these, just to create a whole range of different sort of distortions of that design. But it does then not look as sort of regular all the time when you see a pattern. So you've got that. Well, what you can then do, of course, filters, repeat, deform. Apply it again, you can stretch it. And what I've done, I've actually been applying, so it's stretching this way. Now I'm not, I wasn't stretching the other way. So it's purely pulling out, pulling these threads out from this design. And you can, of course, repeat it multiple times, repeat, deform. As you push it too far, it starts looking terrible. But you can see as you do that, you really get all these lines pulled out. So the vertical suddenly sort of removed, and now you've got this lovely design, which of course now it's a pixel layer. You can always go to layer and go down here to new pattern layer from selection. Just use that as a pattern. 
And you can see there's the pattern. You can obviously see the pixel go below, so let's just deselect that. Now, one trouble with that, you can see you've got these gaps. Now, mirror gets rid of that very quickly. So this mirror, you've got this effect now, and you can resize it, you can rotate it. Of course, you can add multiple layers, tweak it, create duplicates of this, blend them, whole range of different options. And of course, also what you can do, simply go over here, select the paintbrush tool, still got this one selected, and you can still add some more to your pattern design. So if you want to, you just simply just apply it. Now I'm using the mouse for this. I could use obviously the art pad that's in my hand as well. And you can see as you do that, you get this weird and wonderful pattern. That again, it's just a like straight line, straight down. But because it's sort of duplicating here and there, and also let's go over here. I never ever can see this is one thing that always bugs me slightly. Is I wish they could actually make that line for the pattern design slightly bigger. Fine sometimes, but if you've got a lot of blue, blue line to see the blue line is very hard. And especially if you make it very small like that, you just look at it and think, oh, can't see it at all. Doesn't highlight. Also, maybe if they had the option to fade it outside. Obviously, you don't want the actual final result to be faded, but you want just so it fades it so you can actually see where the pattern is. And you can then move it around, maybe have a different angle like that. And as mentioned, you can also go to the move tool, hold down the ultra option key and drag that pattern layer. Make sure you select it, you can see it. And then of course you've duplicated it, just moved it slightly. And again, go to blend modes, maybe go for lighten. I think lighten is great, it's a great one. Maybe resize that. And you can see you can build up all kinds of complex designs just by using this approach with that very basic brush. Now, once you've done that, what you can do, you can also move those. And you've still got this brush. So this brush, double click, you can see here, there seems to be a bug in this. And I think this is a bug in the latest version. I don't know if this existed, but it does seem the more complex a brush you create, where you tweak all various dynamics, after you've done a bit of work with things and changed things, you go back to the brush, it seems to have forgotten it. So possibly, and I would say that a good idea to do would be if you're doing something like creating something like this and you're changing all the various hue jitters and those things and maybe go over here, site click, and then click here, set profile, all these sort of things, is that probably if you want to make certain you've still got it at the end, and I haven't tried this, so I might be completely wrong, is right click and duplicate it. And then use this one. That should, should hopefully remember it, but it does seem to have a tendency. I've noticed to come back to it, and I've noticed a few, the more I add to these brushes, you create something like that, you, it does seem to suddenly go back to, send it all back to zero, which is very slightly odd. Not all of it, because you can see the spacing isn't set back to zero, it's still 1%, but some of the dynamics all seems to be set back. So that's an odd quirk of it. So be aware of that. If you're using these sort of brushes, try and uh, save a copy maybe that you know definitely should still keep all the settings. And again, you can still modify this. You can change the rotation jitter. And the thing I like to do, side click, just turn that and then work, click there and set different profiles to create some truly odd ones with these lovely straight line designs. So you can create some truly weird brush strokes and again close and then apply this brush and you can see you can create that sort of design now the design I created was a very basic design wavy design of course you can extend it as mentioned just simply use let's just remove that again go over here to the brush tool and again back there and this is again the standard start point for me is soft round brush simply apply it very quickly, like that, not that size. I don't want that. Maybe reduce that. And also you can, of course, tweak the hardness. So you can turn around and say, I don't want it that like that. So you want it more without any sort of blurring. And you can create a whole variety and maybe create a double, double like that. Or maybe add some other variation. It's sort of like, some, I always love to add a little bit of dots and things like that, which I think just makes the brush looks slightly different when you apply. Otherwise, if you have a strand one, it ends up being always just lots of strands, but 
add a few other things, maybe some squares, some star designs. And then always, what you can do, I always love to just squeeze it in because sometimes it's very hard to actually make very, it's much easier to make it with slightly bigger and then squeeze it in, I think. Right, once you've got that, again, go over to effects, click there. And of course you had 3D, etc. In this case, I'm just gonna be using red. But of course, as before, you can just simply create a selection. All you need to do is go to select and selection from layer. And then you've got it selected and you can fill it with anything. Fill it with brush strokes. Doesn't have to be a gradient. It could be filled with images. If you've got the selection there, all you need to do then would be edit and then paste inside. So you could just paste into it maybe some images or text or anything. Whole page of text. Well, got this. Gain layer and rasterize. Just want to save everything into it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know, there isn't. If you don't do this, you sometimes find that the 3D effect doesn't get stored away. Sometimes I've noticed it does seem to get stored away. So there's no, con maybe it's just my observation of it. But I like to always do the rasterize, then rash get rid of the effect. So it's all added into the pixel layer. And then go to the brushes and then right click. And again, new brush room selection. And of course you could add multiple. So simply hold down there. You can create a more tangled design like that. Maybe make some small designs like that. Still that sort of like very narrow sort of design, which is what I want. Again, make certain all those are selected. And then go to brushes, go to new brush room selection. And hopefully all of it is selected. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Very hard to tell. Doesn't look like it does it, does it? Very odd. So when it says new brush and selection, always be aware, maybe what you need to do, right click, group, which is what often I do, right click again and rasterize. So it's all rasterized into one pixel there. Then go to brushes, go right side, new brush and selection. Now you can see it's done. I think the wording is slightly odd. I should say new brush from one of the selections and not all of the selection, which, anyway. So you've got this brush and again, Exactly same as before, I'm going to use the one that's more basic. Double click that, and you've got this design. Very complex design, but you can then obviously do all the various things, settings, spacing. Now you might not want to have it, but if you do, you get different designs here. That's the trouble with spacing. So you might want to just keep it like that, so you don't get it too spaced. But of course, as soon as you use the rotation, you're going to see all the different parts of it anyway. So. You can see then you've got the design there. So you could do spacing sector and you get that. Again, dynamics, huge editor. And you can see you've got lovely furry design. I think great for creating furry brushes, which again, if you want, maybe blur it, apply some blur effects to it, blur brush. Don't have to apply the whole thing. Maybe just blur the ends or something, or maybe blur the middle part, or maybe use motion blur and just modify or use masks whole range of options are possible with these sort of straight line designs or any other designs. Then go here again, side click, and again, click here and do different profiles. And you can see then you get maybe more red there or less red, maybe blues, purples, everything coming in and click close. And now just remove that brush, paintbrush tool, you can then apply your brush stroke. And again, you can apply it along a line like that and go here to the move tool, filters, distort and deform. You could use the deform later, but you can also use it now before you do anything. So you just click here and I've done this again. I always do that. Again, always make certain the move tool. Otherwise, sometimes some of the controls will just not let the deform work well. So filters, distort and deform. I hope they fix that. That's one thing that's really bugs me every time I go in, I just make a mistake. Just go into it. And think, oh, you know what? I just can't. And then you can see you can distort it. You can pull it apart, maybe add some more additional pins there, and then just drag that down. And you can create some truly weird and wonderful shapes like that. So it's not always just totally, maybe drag that down there and so on. Maybe squeeze some in there. You just add it, I always add it just outside and then drag it in. So if you click there, you push, it like squeezes it from outside. You can distort it in countless ways. 
click apply, got your brush stroke there, and now, well, you can define that as a brush stroke as well. So go over here, new brush from the section, and use that maybe as a design as well. But again, as before, you can squeeze this and hold down the ultra option key and duplicate it, or go to the move tool, press return or enter. Always make sense, you've got the move tool, and you've got the move and duplicate, and then you can duplicate this and produce. It's always probably best, I think, to look at the horizontal setting first. So let's just turn that duplicate off. Okay, turn that on, but duplicate, reduce that down to one. Sometimes it's easier just to quickly see how far it needs to be pushed, this horizontal, so you can go too far. So something like that, and then number of copies like that. And you can then fill your screen, fill that layer. Oh, what it does actually, it creates multiple layers, but you can simply again select all of them. Wish there was a feature just to make it all grouped into one layer straight away. Right click and then group, right click and then rasterize and you've got your design. Filters, repeat default, exactly the same as before. Use that, just try it. Or of course go to filters, distort and deform, etc. You can play, of course, millions of other filter effects to modify this design even more. Maybe again go to effects, go to 3D and just add a 3D effect there. Maybe out of shadow this time. Radius, offset, and intensity, click close, create some truly odd shaped designs. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.